Hello, this is Mike Lively, and we're continuing our Chapter 2 assignment. This is the second assignment in Chapter 2. And in this particular series of videos, we're going to be talking about the Undulating Sphere class. We're going to develop a paper vision class, and also a basic view class where we actually have an interactive cube. We also address the interactive cube in Chapter 9. So let's go ahead and uh, show you those classes we'll be building, and then we'll go ahead and build them. So let's start with the Undulating Sphere. So I have the undulating sphere on the screen here. and We've actually treated this in a few past videos, and we'll go through it again. And we'll go through all the steps of how to make this happen. And then we'll look at the interactive cube. Let's pull that up. And the interactive cube uses the basic view class, and we'll discuss why there needs to be such a class and the process of encapsulation. And in this particular example, you just roll over, and you see you get the hand cursor when you have interactivity. And you click on the cube, and it stops, and you click again, and it starts. So some basic interactivity about the material list, and the basic view class that you'll be covering in this section. So let's get to it. So just to remind you, we're going to start off by building this particular class. This is the paper vision class as addressed in your book. Now in the book in chapter one, I go through it in great detail, uh, but we're going to actually just go right to the class and explain each portion of it. But in order to understand how to build a paper vision class, you've got to understand all the elements involved. And so uh, there's a section here in the book called the guts of paper vision, and basically there's a scene, that's the stuff, okay? And there's a viewport, that's basically uh, the place where all your stuff goes, and then you're, it's what you're going to be projecting onto the screen. There's the eye, and that's what looks at all your stuff. And there's the object, that is your stuff. And the material is the stuff that your objects wear. And finally, once you get all that stuff together, you've got to, in a sense, have an artist or some way to, to, in a sense, pull it all together and render it to the stage. And we call that the renderer. So uh, there's a lot of stuff. You've got to look at this stuff. So you've got stuff. You've got to put clothes on it. You gotta put that stuff somewhere and then you gotta render that stuff to the screen and then you have to make the then you have to have a rendering device or an artist to pull all that stuff together. This will become quite apparent as we go through the class. So if you page through the chapter, I go through step by step on how to build this class and construct it from scratch. But we're gonna go right to the class now in the code and we're gonna discuss how it works. So the name of this class is Paper Vision Class Motion. You can actually get that from the download code or just go to my Google code on this particular series. I'll have it up for you to grab as well. And we have updated this in the sense we are using the newest version of Paper Vision uh, for Flash Player 10. And here's the class right here. Just double click. We're actually in an ActionScript package. We're going to double click the Flash Builder. We're going to go right to that package. So let's go to the very top. Now a class itself consists of six parts. And the first part is the, the package. And that's just that keeps it all together in one place. And then we're going to have our import statements right here. And so we've talked about Flash imports. There's a lot of paper vision imports we're going to be talking about through the series in this book. And there's something new here I want you guys to take a look at. That's the SWF meta tag. Now, in Flash, you can do all this through the properties windows, or also in Flash Builder, you can do the same thing through its properties. But with an ActionScript package, you really need this SWF tag. And you can see the first two pieces in it gives you the width and the height. You can set the background color of your application and the frame rate. Right now, I have it set at 40. You know, Flash Builder typically runs at 24. But in this particular instance, you can set it to different frame rates. After that, you have the uh, class statement. And you need to start, in a sense, creating instance names of the different classes, of different things that you knew. So now you'll begin to identify things that we talked about previously. You've got to have a viewport, so you've got to have a viewport class. You've got to have a camera, you need a camera class. You've got to have a scene, and you've got to have that renderer. You see that? Just below that, you have your object, which is going to be a sphere in this case. And you have the clothes, or in a sense, the material that sphere is going to wear. So all of those six items that we discussed previously are right here in the code and you have classes that govern them, and you have to declare those classes, and you have to import those classes, and then you have to declare them in your program so you can use them. And so there you have it. Now just below that is the constructor function. So when your class is instantiated, it runs what's inside of the constructor function. So you have three methods here you're going to run. You're going to run the initiate PV3D, you're going to create objects, and you're going to start your render up. And that's your frame looper, and we'll explain how that works in a moment. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to initiate that object. Now what you can do is control rollover method. So let's control. See how that highlights? You're holding down control in Flash Builder. Just click on that. It takes you to that method. And so that's the first method that runs. And what we're doing here is we're going to start bringing in all those components we just declared. So we're going to create, a, create our viewport, and we're going to make it true and false. What does that mean? So I don't know. So what I do is come here into Flash Builder. And I'm just going to put a little hit the space bar in a sense, or hit the parenthesis as if I'm trying to type it in. And all of a sudden, all this code hitting comes up, and it shows me what's actually in that. So the first part you can see is the width, the height of the viewport, 
uh, is it going to auto the stage? Is it going to take the whole stage over, or I'm going to be able to set the, the viewport size? And then is it going to be interactive? And I'm going to want it to be interactive if I want to actually do some clicking on it. And we'll talk about that when we get to the cube example. And then all I'm going to do is just add that viewport to the stage with the add child method. Once again, I have to declare a camera. I have to declare a scene to put those objects into. So I need to be able to see it. I need to have my objects in the scene, and I need to declare my renderer. And one more thing is right here are the stage uh, properties. And these are pretty transparent. If I want to align it to the top, I can set stage align to top. And if I don't want to scale it, I set it to no scale. Now, that's discussed in the textbook. We're not going to address this a whole lot until we get a little further on. But if you need these, read in the text, and we'll be in good shape. Actually, we're going to stop using these as we move into Flex Builder Design Project. So at this point, you should ask the question, wait a second. I see a viewport. I see a camera. I see a scene. But how do I tie all those together? Well, the way you're going to tie those together is through the renderer. And we'll get to that in a moment. So the next uh, method that you have is create objects. Let's click on that. And what you're going to do basically is create your sphere. So you've, so you've declared your sphere. You want to give it a wire material. And FFFFFF is white and hexadecimal. 0000, zero, 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 zero is black and hexadecimal. And then everything in between are all the different colors. And then once you've got that wireframe material uh, created, you want to stick it into the sphere object. And then you're going to give that sphere a radius. And you're going to give it some segments. OK? And then once you've done that, you're going to add it to the scene. But once again, once that's added to the scene, how does that get you know, pulled together so that it all ties in? So let's go back to our last method. And our last method creates the animation loop. Let's click on that. And here we are right here. And all we're doing is creating an on enter frame event. And every time this on enter frame event fires, you run this animation loop. Now in the first part of this animation loop, all you're doing is using sines and cosines and stretches and scales to get your application in a sense to do what's happening on the screen. All right? And we'll be talking about math a whole lot in this course. And you'll definitely understand what all this means and how to use it as you proceed in the book. But what I want to bring your attention to real quick here is this very last statement. And that is the render scene statement. That's what brings everything together. So there's your scene. There's your camera. And there's your viewport, and everything's being wrapped together in this render scene. Well, how do I know what that does? Well, once again, use your rollover control trick. That takes you right to the class, and you can see right here in this class, which is the basic render engine, right in this class, right below, you're weaving these three things together. The scene, the camera, and the viewport. Look at that. And what you need to do as you begin working through paper vision, as we work through paper vision, we'll be rolling over and clicking on these different classes and going to them and explaining what they do and why they're there. So let's go back to our application. And so that's a real quick run through on uh, creating a paper vision class. Make sure you read through the textbook. And next time we're going to talk about the basic view class, encapsulation, and interactivity. Hey, well, thanks for listening. This was Mike Lively, and I'll see you next time.